It is Brian O'Halloran who joins us right now on the Harbor One Hotline. Sometimes it ends up you're joining us and the mood is not so great. Brian, I think you got lucky today. This team looks pretty good these days. Yeah, usually Sam and Heim find a way to get me get me on here after we get swept, but this time somehow it worked out that, I, that here I am. <laughs> so if yeah, if you just take the last week and a half in in kind of a some kind of a time capsule um, in your mind, what what has made the difference for this Red Sox team? Yeah, I mean, I, I just think that that. Uh, you know the offense continues continues to have a good approach, and and uh, you know we uh, but but that's really you know shown in the results. Although the, the offense really wasn't our problem when we were struggling, uh, starting pitching has been our our one area, uh, most obvious area of of uh, you know inconsistency. Um, we've our starters have kept us in games. It hasn't been perfect, but um, I just think we're playing decent baseball. It's not perfect every night, but um, we're, we're, this team has shown that it fights, that it battles. When it gets down, it, it comes back. Um, even though the uh, it's obviously you know, hasn't been the greatest weather, and and um, and, uh, and and so it's still early in the season. So it's not like the Fenway crowds that we're going to have this summer. But just the the you know the home cooking helps as well. Just being at home in Fenway Park. So I think it's. We're just, but we're just playing like we can and and, uh, and just need to keep going. Brian, now with a question or maybe even two. Mm. Courtney Cox. Oh, thank you so much, Greg. <laughs> uh, Brian, when you look at the guys that are really showing out at this part of the season, they're not necessarily names that we were all shouting from the rooftop uh, before we the season got underway, like Connor Wong, Josh Winkowski, uh, Alex Verdugo, all guys that were acquired by Heim Bloom. Do you think that fans and media members were – too harsh on Heim to to begin the season, and maybe we're now seeing you know what his what his brain actually does. <laughs> that's a that's a well phrased question. Um, so uh, look, I I think you know the we all understand the 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 market we're in the the incredible and intense attention on. on uh, on our sports teams, including, including the one we're talking about today. And, and there's going to be, um, you know, questions, you know, when, when, when star players, uh, don't, don't get signed and come back when, um, you know, you acquire players that people don't know as well. Um, there's going to be questions. There's going to be scrutiny. We're all used to that. I'm certainly understands that. Um, you know, we, we just have to kind of set aside the noise and, and just focus on doing what we, th- what we think is right for the Red Sox. And, uh, both the short and the long term, and trying to trying to build a team that that can win every year, that can ha- that can compete for a championship every year, and and so yeah, the, it's it's great to see some of the guys uh, that you mentioned uh, performing really well, and and there's going to be ups and downs, but uh, right now, um, you know, uh, you know, people are are seeing some of the uh, some of the um, fruits of the labor, so to speak, but uh, but that's just we just have to keep going. We're, you know, today we, we have we've won five in a row. That doesn't mean we're you're going to win every game the rest of the season. We're going to have our ups and downs, and we just got to ignore the noise and, and keep trying to get better. Follow up, Ms. Cox. Oh, so so are you, <laughs> so are you are you surprised by by the guys that that are you know making the headlines in the last couple of games? No, these are these are good players. Um, you know, um, again, there's going to be ups and downs, but especially with young players, um, and, and Connor uh, Connor Wong is a good example. Like. You know, um, you know, so just really starting his career, but uh, has always been really good behind the plate, and in the minor league showed that he can be a good uh, offensive player as well. You know, didn't have a a ton of reps in the big leagues. Uh, you know, just, you know, obviously last year got got some towards the end of the year, and um, and uh, but we we know the talent, and um, and it's great to see it coming through. I mean, there's, you see it with Duran. Um, obviously, you know, he sometimes guys you know struggle to. Uh, to reach, you know, what their potential is when they're when they're just uh, breaking into the into the big league, it can take a while. And um, and it's, but it's good to see when 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 the guy's talent actually comes out, when they're relaxed, when they're able to play and, and get in the groove. And I think that's what we're seeing. Brian, when you look at your starting pitching, right? Can you win without that traditional ace? Because you know you you got guys out there that no one's really yeah. taken that mantle of kind of like a Garrett Cole, or we've seen in the past with Pedro or Kurt Schilling 
Or is there a guy that you expect on this this rotation to take that role? Well, I think, you know, you have to have a good starting pitch, pitching to win. And, you know, if you, if you can get to the postseason, we all know what that looks like. Um, and, and you have to have guy, whether you whatever you call them, whether you call them an ace or whether, whether you know, whatever their uh, performance is um, at different times, guys need to step up. And, and, um, and certainly if, if, uh, if we can get, find ourselves to the postseason in order, in order to win, we're going to need um, ace caliber pitching. And we certainly are going to need some of it to get there. And, and so far, um, it's, you know, our, our results have been inconsistent, but every one of the guys in this rotation is talented. And, and, and as far as, you know, who's the ace, I mean, Chris Ale is, 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 uh, is our leader and, and has proven that he can, he can be, uh, uh, he can be, you know, one of the best pitchers in baseball and that talent is still there. And yes, he's had some inconsistencies, uh, this year as he, as he, you know, gets back, uh, from, a lot of time off, but um, but you know his last start was was good, and we'll we'll build mm-hmm. from there. I he's like pretty, to say he's proven he can be the best or even the worst. I, I like to say you have a bunch of jacks. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Not not aces, not kings, <laughs> not <laughs> queens, jacks. jacks. Good okay. good cards to have, All but right. you know not yeah, the aces. Uh, yes, Shime. Courtney, uh, Courtney, did you have another? <laughs> no, no, Courtney's all set. Yeah, uh, Brian. Yesterday, uh, yesterday on this station, Alex Verdugo, or I'm sorry, Alex Cora referred to Alec Manoa as a uh, bully. Do you do you like that kind of fire out of your manager? And do you think that kind of helped propel the team last night to get their third straight win against the Blue Jays? I think Alex Cora does a great job of keeping our our group motivated in in different ways and gets the most out of players and. And, uh, so, uh, I, you know, I'm always, uh, always happy to see Alex, uh, speak his mind and, and, uh, and keep the guys, uh, in a good frame of mind to go out and, and win games. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know any particular words the manager, you know, said, uh, says before a game necessarily means you're going to win or lose, but, uh, but Alex always keeps the guys motivated. All right, Brian. Well, always a pleasure. And we will talk to you again soon. And thanks for being here this week. Okay, thanks, guys. Take care. All right, Brian O'Halloran, Red Sox front office reporter.